So welcome back. Uh, we're here with Steven again. Uh, he's already shared one recipe with us. He's done one equipment review and he's got another recipe. So this is another good one. It's his porter recipe. Yeah. Oh, um, let's pour it first this time. I realized we were talking about it last time about the ESB and my mouth was just water and I was like, man, we should have poured before we got started. So, but go ahead, Steve. Uh, this is another one of my uh, older recipes, um, and I will be honest, I did not uh, come up with this on my own. I completely stole this from a uh, uh, Can You Brew It ses uh, episode of uh, the Black View Porter recipe. Mm. Um, everything that's in it is, um, you know, right off of that particular episode, uh, and it is, uh, it's one, I brewed this, the first time I brewed it was 2013 into 2014. Uh, but then in uh, 2014, I submitted this to the Great Arizona Homebrew uh, Competition uh, before, like right before I moved to Colorado, and ended up getting best of show with this uh, recipe. So uh, oh, it's one I've decided after that I'm not going to adjust it. I'm just going to yeah, just, just gonna, keep brewing it. Yeah, roll. yeah. So yeah. if it's not broke. So again, I love the malt aroma on it. It's just a nice rounded malt yep. aroma. Yep. I mean, it's just a hint of toast. In there. Yeah, a so, little caramel. Yeah, that's what yeah. I think. I don't know. I have this conversation all the time. I think every time porters and stouts come up, is you know people are like, well, you know, how roasty or toasty should a porter be? And I, my contribution, whether it's right or not, is I think porters should be toasty and stouts be roasty, right? And but some, I think people get a little carried away with their porters sometimes, and it gets a little uh, astringent. Yeah. With the, with the roast i'm with you on that though i, I like I, if i want a, a stout then i'll look to something you know, i'm yeah. sorry if i want something roasty i'll want a stout yep. but i don't i don't yeah. know it's not I mean, that's like, always my favorite that's like guinness i mean guinness is basically roasted barley and water is it no it's not there's other <laughs> stuff in there but i mean that's the primary character uh, flavor driver to me i yeah. mean you get other, the other sugars from the malts mixing in there but yeah it's roast yeah but it's, yeah i don't know but yeah this is this is perfect. Yeah, this, this is very is, nice. Exactly. And it's not a chewy beer either. That's great. Yeah, in my opinion, and, and, you know, not that I'm the expert on it, but I just don't think that, that porters should be chewy either. I feel no. like they, they should be an easy drinking beer. Um, you know, and I I like to brew this one every winter uh, just to have it on hand. Um, you know, growing, growing up and living in Phoenix and drinking, you know, beer like this in the winter, it doesn't mean the same as it does here. Like when we get snow and it's just kind of nice to go out on the deck and, and have something like this. So, yeah, yeah no, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of people tend to overdo it with stouts and porters mm -hmm. thinking they're, you know, just a big, thick, chewy beer. And yeah. they're not. No. Yeah. I mean, it definitely has, I'd say a, a medium mouthfeel or medium yeah. low or medium light. But. Right. Um, definitely not heavy, but it's not watery. Yeah, no. There's something there, and it doesn't finish too dry. It finishes just right. Well, this yeah. recipe will be available as well. Uh, uh, yes. Again, again, like I said, I, this was uh, this was taken off of um, the the Brewing Network's uh, show, and I um, the only changes that have been made is uh, from that particular one to now is learning uh, water chemistry and, and using a water profile that I found for it. Um, and then uh, just make you know matching it to my brew system as yeah. opposed to the system whatever it was that they were using. Yeah. So yeah, before the show we we're talking about that burnt non Trent um, water profile, which is I, I think it's like six pounds of granite, something like and that, and then some salt. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's, yeah, there's it's, so much it's, stuff. It's, in it. so much. Yeah, truckload of this. And, yeah. yeah, a couple wheelbarrow all that. A couple boxes of school chalk. You just <laughs> yeah. love your aunt's ashes. <laughs> So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in that Burton on Trent. Yeah, that's... this one is not Burtonized. Um, I couldn't I couldn't remember or find what the what profile was that I, that I did actually select for it, but um, you know I think that it does actually work really well. I wonder what the gravity of Burton on Trent water is. <laughs> <laughs> that may skew everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but. 10 10. Oh, great. Is that your final gravity? No, that's the water. <laughs> that's, that's my pre strike. <laughs> mm. Certainly not distilled. <laughs> so, excellent. Wait. Another excellent beer, Steve. Yeah, no kidding. You know, one thing pops to mind drinking this a cask. This needs to be on a, ca on a cask. That'd be Afterwards, awesome. I should talk to Have I talked to you about doing cask ales and corny kegs? 
No, you have not. I, we should talk after the show. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm interested. Because yeah. I would like to do that. I, I don't have a beer engine. I was looking at trying to buy one, but and it's more money than I want to spend. Yeah. Um, yeah I, but... I was looking at people are making them with uh, um, are these RV pumps that are like really? paddle pumps. And it's basically the same mechanism. Okay. Um, but it's a sink. Yeah, basically a sink with a faucet. And you hand pump out the beer and using okay. that instead. But um, yeah, I was curious about using a corn. Well, I can talk. The corny keg is basically you, you carbonate it in the keg and then you... you uh, tilt the keg so that the the disconnects are facing down and okay. it's slightly raised in the back and you serve out of the air and then you put a uh, um, a open valve on the liquid so it can return air into it huh i was like that sounds interesting this might be something to try as a club oh, yeah yeah just... well I, the other thing too is i've got some tiny kegs like a gallon and a half and a three gallon keg okay i thought that'd be a good experiment format for sure yeah yeah the one thing that uh, i think the most people in the club know is that i love the english beers um i know our club is very fond of belgians and and that's not my go-to english styles are so i i look for um you know a lot of the beers i have always have english yeast in them or uh, you know, like English hops and that sort of stuff. And so that's the one thing I haven't been able to do is actually like pour like a, you know, even though it's still not using a beer engine, just something out of a cask. That's the mm -hmm. one thing I have yet to do. Um, and I really, that's kind of on my beer bucket list. Maybe yeah. we should team up and do a, do the, uh, Firkin. Yeah. Yeah. I know we have that still, don't we? Yeah. The is only... that being used right now by somebody? No. Yeah. The only problem I have with doing the Firkin is I don't think we drink, you know, five gallons of beer in a night. And, you know, if you just exposed yeah. it to air, then yeah, it, yeah kind of up quick, a creek, so. yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think if we did it, like right before something like Salida might be a good time, yeah. right? Yeah, and the problem is, is you, you know, Salida is like then. two weeks. Yeah, can't do yeah. it. <laughs> Not this year. We, could we turn it around before August? Oh, um, yeah. If it was brewed... Oh, because I, mean? I think the picnic is like August 20th. Mm -hmm. Oh, but we're going to have all the big beers. <laughs> yeah. So maybe not. We'll have, to, we'll have to put our heads yeah. together because that would be cool. Yeah. 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 Well, sorry for rambling there, but yeah. <laughs> if you're in the club, you're proudly interested, but everyone else is like, I don't care when yeah. you do the firkin. <laughs> Go firk yourself. <laughs> Take your firkin firkin. <laughs> So yeah, yeah great beers. Yeah, Again, thank you delicious. for sharing us sharing the recipe with us. Um, I did miss the mastermind on this one. That's, did either of you guys go to the mastermind? No, did not. no. Okay, I just wonder how that one turned out. I didn't have a chance to sign up for it. So. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know what they brewed either. I think they did. Did they do? Uh, I think they English? did their own. No. I think, okay. I want to say. Well, yeah. I think it was more American. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. I remember we judged a few, and they were pretty hoppy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, I much prefer the English yeah. orders much. But anyway, yeah. So thanks. Yeah. Till yeah. next time. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching our video. Check out our website at coloradobrewtalk.com for more great content. While you're there, be sure to leave us a comment or drop us a line with your thoughts. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at co brew talk, or follow the links below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content. Or episodes, as the case may be. <laughs>